Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Octobyte. I'm Jordan, and today we're going to be taking a look at this package here in front of me that I received a couple of weeks ago, and I'm really excited to dig into today. This is the Pine 64 Pine Soul. Before we get into the package, I'd like to give a little bit of background. You're welcome to skip this section. There'll be a timestamp in the description. But for those who stick around, just a little bit of context. I work on a few little personal projects every year. Some of them require some soldering. In years past, that was never a problem. I always used my university's electronics lab and then later uh, my employer's electronics lab so that I could solder headers and, and make some small adjustments to things. Um, more recently, I've been considering doing some recaps on a couple of the retro computers that I have around the house, and I would like a good soldering iron for that. So that kind of led me to looking for a soldering iron a few months ago. I was originally intrigued by a soldering iron called the TS100. Uh, it's featured on Adrian's Digital Basement, which if you're not subscribed to that channel and you like retro computers and debugging circuits, you should definitely get on that. But he uses the TS100 on his channel fairly regularly uh, for a large number of things, including recapping computers. And it's a portable temperature controlled soldering iron. Sounds a lot like what we have in this box, right? Which runs off of a DC power supply with a barrel jack in the back of the soldering iron so that you can just plug in any like standard laptop uh, power supply and get to soldering. And anything between 12 and 24 volts works. So that was very compelling to me. Then uh, I started to talk to some friends of mine and they recommended the TS-80, which sounds very familiar, right? That's because it is the later version of the TS-100. And it is nearly identical, except it's powered off of USB Type-C using quick charge or USB power delivery, which is also kind of compelling. So in both cases, you can actually run the soldering iron off a of battery in the one case, the TS-100, you can actually run it off of LiPo batteries. That's why it's very popular in the quadrocopter scene. So you can actually just plug in your quadrocopter batteries and you can make field repairs really easily. And then you have the TS-80, which has the USB Type-C, which means that you can use any quick charge compliant or power delivery compliant, uh, which is a little bit different than regular Type-C charging. It needs to be able to output much higher voltages than the 5 volts that are typical on a USB. Uh, line. But fairly commodity hardware and you can use it outside, which kind of compelling because I don't like solder fumes and soldering outside in the fresh air just sounds lovely. So now I'm kind of left with a bit of a quandary. Do I use the TS-80 or the TS-100? They're both about $80, 80 to 100 um, on Alibaba and a little bit more on Amazon. But Decisions, decisions. I was kind of trying to decide, do I want that barrel jack or do I want the USB Type-C? And I know that sounds kind of silly, but uh, it, it does lead to a few constraints. For instance, the using the barrel jack, very convenient. I can use any of the old laptop power supplies I have, and it heats up a fair amount quicker than the USB Type-C soldering iron, though it gets to the same temperatures ultimately. But while I have a couple of quadrocopters, I don't have a lot of LiPo batteries hanging around, and quite frankly, they scare me a little bit. I realize that's just my paranoia, but I've seen too many batteries explode, so I, I tend to be a little bit wary of them. And the other soldering iron just uses a standard USB Type-C battery pack, which is interesting and exciting, and I could use that to charge phones or, or whatever I want to do. Then one night, I don't remember if I was just browsing their blog directly or I found it on Hacker News, but I found that Pine64 was making a temperature-controlled portable soldering iron, the Pine Soul that we have here today. And while it looks a lot like a TS-100, it has one key difference. It can also be powered by USB Type-C and a barrel jack, depending on which one you want to choose. Voila! No more decision to make. So I started reading more about it, and what really sold me was how much do you think this, this compelling product that gets rid of all of my decision-making 
would cost. You know, it, it's, it's got to be more expensive, right? It's got to be a hundred. Two hundred? How much would you pay for this sort of convenience? Would you believe me if I told you that it was only thirty dollars? Yes, that's right, even cheaper than the TS-100 and the TS-80. I was sold. And while you can't find very many reviews on this product, I figured why not? I'll give it a shot. For that price, I can always just buy another soldering iron if this one blows up in my hand. It won't blow up in my hand. I think we'll be fine. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's crack this puppy open. Got my grandfather's knife here, which is in desperate need of a cleaning and sharpening, but it should work just fine on this tape. There we go. And as you can see, this arrived via China Post. It uh, arrived relatively quickly, about one or two weeks. It says it was a $20 value. I think I paid closer to $30, but I won't, uh, won't say anything. I don't think that's a big deal. So inside of this box, we have a second box. And uh, this one's got the lovely Pine 64 pine cone on it in silver, which looks really nice. Got it on both sides. And as you can see from the back, this is a Pine 64 Pine Soul BB2. Shame it's not a BB8, that would be even more exciting. Uh, but this is still pretty exciting. Got a Pine Electric Iron with Temperature Control made in China. Sounds pretty accurate. Let's get this reflective covering off of here. Now on top you're going to see that we have a little bonus, and I'll get back to that in just a second. But here is our iron and a tip to go inside of it. So this tip is just a standard TS-100 tip. You can buy a variety of different sizes and, and tip shapes, and Pine64 will even sell you some, um, but you can get them from third parties as well. And then here we've got the iron, which is going to take 12 to 24 volts, and you can power it via USB Type-C using Quick Charge 3.0 or USB power delivery, and a barrel jack, which is very nice. And uh, we got two buttons here on the top, which are satisfyingly clicky, I must say. And a little 96 by 16 pixel display, which uh, we'll have to see how that looks in a second. But yeah, the whole body is made out of plastic, but it feels fairly high quality, and I really like this rubber plastic grip that we've got here. It feels nice. So we can take out our tip here. And they're interchangeable, as I mentioned, so they just slide right in. And then you can screw it down to secure it. And uh, yeah, all in all, it feels very good in the hand. It's about 30 grams, according to their website, uh, which makes it actually lighter than the TS-80 or the TS-100. Um, and I'll have to see how it feels once we have a cable hanging off of it or so, but it, uh, it feels pretty... Precise, like I think I could do pretty precise soldering with this. I, uh, I feel pretty good about it. And uh, so yeah, let's get to that bonus item though, because that, that's kind of exciting and interesting. I'm not sure if these are going to come with the uh, any other of the, of the batch runs, but this was with the very first batch production batch run that I, I got. And uh, before we get into this, maybe a little bit of explainer. So instead of the arm processor that TS-100 or the TS-80 is using, this is actually running a RISC-V processor. So what does that mean as a user of the soldering iron? Very little, but Pine64 decided to kind of make this a dual purpose device where it's both a cheap soldering iron, but it's also a RISC-V development board. And this is really in line with Pine64's ethos of open source, uh, RISC-V is a open source ISA, and so it's kind of cool that they've, they've given you this dual purpose. And that brings us to this little extra that they sent along, which, if we can get it out here, is a little breakout board for the RISC-V processor inside. And it breaks out SPI, the ADC, and the, DA, and the DAC. Uh, as long with the USB and UART and I2C. So effectively, you can solder on these little headers uh, to the board they've given us here, and you plug one end into the soldering iron and the other one passes through power, and then you can use the soldering iron as a little RISC-V development board with I2C and SPI broken out to run different peripherals. 
In addition to the peripherals that you can add this way, the Saturn iron itself actually has an accelerometer and this screen obviously and a couple of push buttons. And uh, the accelerometer is used to detect if we are leaving the Saturn iron sit for a while, it'll actually turn itself off. Uh, but you could use it for all sorts of random hacky projects if you wanted to. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to play with this particular part of the Saturn iron, but I thought it was a really neat addition. It, uh, for those that care, it is a 32-bit uh, RISC-V processor running at 108 megahertz with 128 kilobytes of flash and 32 kilobytes of SRAM. So it's a, it's a pretty beefy little microprocessor. Uh, funnily enough, it actually would run faster, I think, than the AT&T 6300 that I showed on the channel last week. So it's amazing just how far technology has come. Um, I always find that kind of interesting. And by default, this little processor is running firmware that was developed originally for the TS100, which used to just be called TS100 firmware, I think, but it is now called IronOS after the creator Ben Brown out in Australia uh, ported it to the RISC-V architecture for the Pine64 company. Um, so definitely check out the firmware by Ben or Ralim as he goes uh, on GitHub. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And I'll leave a link in the description. But uh, yeah, very cool. There's some good documentation there and I very well might play with that. Um, but you guys probably care about the soldering iron itself. So how about we plug this guy in and just see how it works. I don't want to do a full review right now just because I, I want to have some time to play with it. Uh, but I figured this would be a good first look. So let me grab a laptop power supply. I've got an Asus power supply from an old laptop here. It's a 19 volt DC power supply and uh, has the right polarity and the right plug shape. So I think that I can just plug these in and we'll see how it goes. Ah, beautiful, it powers right on. And by default, it looks like if you press plus, it solders. So I'm assuming that'll just heat up the iron. I do not want to burn myself, so I'll be careful not to press that. And on this side, it looks like there's some menus. Very cool. It would be kind of neat to be able to... Looks like user interface. Be neat to be able to see what the temperature of the soldering iron is. I know that's a feature that you can have. Display rotation, cool down blink, scroll line speed. Okay, I'm gonna have to look up what some of these do. It looks like once you get out of that first, that end sub menu, it actually goes up to the top menu. Let's try advanced options here. Power limit, oh, detailed idle screen. I think that might be what we want. So we select that. Detailed solder screen, sure, why not? Details are good, factory reset, no, I just set some things. Calibrate input voltage, I don't know how well you can see that on my camera here, hopefully it's coming in well. Modify tip gain, okay. Ah, beautiful, okay, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. So you can see that the tip is currently 30 degrees Celsius and it is set to 320, so this can go anywhere from 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. And it's currently drawing 18.7 volts off this little uh, power supply, so that's cool. I'm not going to turn this on right now, just because, uh, well, you know what, why not? Let's, let's see how it goes. We'll press the plus button, and you can see it's actually drawing power, 41 watts, and the tip is already at 200, 300. Okay, so we're already at over 300 degrees Celsius. <laughs> so I gotta be careful where I set this down now. Um, oh, that adjusts the temperature. Okay, there does not seem to be a way to turn this off, so I'm just gonna unplug it. <laughs> and I think I'll cut there. So I hope you've enjoyed this little unboxing of the Pine64 Pine Soul. I'll have more content for you soon. And uh, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and uh, that other button seems to work pretty well if you don't. And uh, hope you had a great new year. Look forward to spending 2021 with you. Take care. Peace.